VGC 2023 was shaping up to be one of the best years we've ever had, and while it was still an incredible year, I can't help but feel there was one stain on this season, and that was the introduction of the home Pokemon right before the World Championships. Now, there was quite a few average to bad Pokemon introduced, but the real issue here were the handful of Pokemon that completely flipped the metagame on its head and took a stranglehold of it. So, before jumping into the home Pokemon and why I think they were bad to the metagame, first of all I want to look at the NAIC top 8. So this was the last tournament basically before the World Championships that we played on Regulation C. Now, as you can see here, in the first place here we have Alex Gomez who on his team had a Tinglu, which is a mon you do not see anymore post-Regulation C. You also see a rain team by Regavi with Palafa, which has seen a little bit of success, but both Arcanine and Palafin have both completely dropped off, and Pel Pelipa, while it does see some play, is very, very minimal. Gyarados is another Pokemon that was one of the premier Intimidate mods before, that is almost seeing no play at all. Um, Joseph Ugarte's team here is a fantastic example of this as well, where he had mods like Jumpluff here, Torkoal, Great Tusk, and King Gambit. Jumpluff has not seen any play. Granted, really, Joe was really the only person with success on the uh, the jump off for most of the season. Torkoal really only ever sees play in Sunroom now. Great Tusk went from being the, you know, arguably the greatest ground type we had to uh, a mod that just sees absolutely no play. And King Gambit, while it saw almost no play in Regulation D, has come back since the DLC dropped. Similar to what we said earlier with Marcus team, obviously he's got the Gyarados here, which again has fallen off. He's also got the Garchomp too, which was in contention with Great Tusk as the best ground type in the format. And again, has disappeared. This one does not see any more play at all. Uh, and then even here, Chop across his team, right? You've got Talonflame, which was the premier Tailwind setter, and Iron Bundle here, which was arguably the premier speed control mod, right? With, you know, speed boost, Icy Wind. Neither one of them see any play anymore. The Guard Chomp sees no play anymore. You know, Judy Azarelli's team here, we kind of touched on, I believe it's the, I think he built this team with Regav. Um, it is the exact same mons. Again, half the team sees no play anymore. Just a knock, you know, we don't see any screens anymore. You know, Iron Moth, one of my favorite Pokemon, gets, you know, no play at all. And Gyarados, again, you see there's three placements here in the top eight, you know. Palafin also has two in the top eight. These mons see absolutely no play anymore, and it's it's quite sad. And we quickly jump over here to the VGC data Twitter page. And as you can see here, this is the NAIC day two uh, stats for the top 69 players, right? So these were the 69 players that made day two, right? You see here we have Tinglu being, you know, I believe that is the sixth most used Pokemon at the event. You know, Talonflame and Bundle are up there. Arcanine's up there. Garchomp's in the top 20, you know. Gambit, Screamtail. Mouse holds there. We got Great Task, Annihilate, just a lot of like you know mods that you essentially just don't see anymore in Regulation D or Regulation E. And honestly, I'm not sure if we'll even see them in Regulation F. Now we jump over to Showdown here, where I have created a box with some of the Pokemon I deem to be the best that were introduced in the Pokemon Home update. Now there are quite a few mods here that I think were you know healthy additions, you know that played solid roles. Other mods, you know that just really just kind of took a like a strong hold in the metagame. You know, so we had some mods that were definitely good. You know, some of these mods here in the bottom in particular were good, but definitely some of these mods here around, you know, the Urshifu Tornadus Landorus really just took a hold of the metagame and were just incredibly, incredibly powerful. But now I want to quickly touch on the Hisuian mods. Now, these mods I actually do think were quite a healthy, um, you know, addition to the metagame. Now, I do really wish these mods were introduced in DLC 1, you know, maybe put them in the Timeless Woods or something along those lines. But when you have a look at, you know, Ursaluna, for example, Ursaluna was a fantastic addition to Trick Room. Trick Room was really struggling before Regulation D, so I think having a really strong Trick Room sweeper, you know, that was able, able to abuse Guts was really important because a lot of Trick Room teams really struggled into Amoongus. Basque Legion was another fantastic mod for Rain Team. There was a Swift Swimmer that was also a really strong, you know, Choice Scarf mod. Uh, we also had Sneasler, which was fantastic uh, when paired up with, you know, some of the terrains, you know, uh, potentially, you know, psychic terrain, uh, grassy terrain as well. Uh, really, really solid. Hasui and Arcanine gave us another mon, um, really, that was able to, you know, spam out Intimidate. Just gave us, a, you know, a different option, a fire rock, um, you know, gave us a solid rock type as well. So it would have been really cool to see that, you know, without some of the, you know, the other home mods that were introduced. Hasui and Gujra gave us, you know, one of our first, you know, I don't want to say one of our first, but another raid boss, right? We had mons out there like Annihilate and whatnot, but Hasui and Gujra was a really, really interesting mon with, you know, Iron Defense body press sets. Uh, and it was really cool, especially behind screens, back when screens were a thing. Pursuing Lilligant's another mod as well that gave us a good option on Sun. You know, this gave us an even faster, you know, Sun abuser than Lilligant, for example, um, or regular Lilligant, I should say. And, you know, it had things like, you know, a really powerful attack stat. Well, not necessarily a powerful attack, but it had close combat and Solar Blade. Uh, it also has things like After You Sleep Powder and all that stuff. So it was a really, really healthy addition to Sun. Uh, and really enamorous. I I feel bad almost like putting it in here with the Hisuian mods because technically it is a Hisuian mod, but it feels weird to add this without the other genies. But this is a mod too that I think could have actually been a lot better had some of the other, you know, home mods not been added. 
But now for the uh, the more important home mods, in my opinion. So I will kind of reference the uh, the stats we had a look at before, and I might even jump back and forth between, you know, just so we can kind of, you know, really take a deeper look at what these mods do and why I think they kind of remove some of the other really good mods from the metagame. So to start things off, we have Urshifu Rapid Strike. Now, everyone knows what this mod does at this point, I believe. It is one of the best mods in the format. It's incredibly strong. Its damage is insane. It doesn't care about Intimidate. It hits hard. It bypasses Protect. This mod really does a lot. As you can see here, Unseen Fist, a contact move that ignores um, the target uh, protection. So basically, it goes through Protect, right? Then the signature move here is Surging Strikes. It hits three times and always crits. So do not take that 25 base power thinking, oh, this is weak. No, it always crits. It's a very, very strong move. It also has you know access to things like Close Combat, which is a very powerful stab. Aqua Jet, which is a very good priority move. And then it pairs all that up with a very, very solid 130 attack stat. A very, very good attack stat. And 97 speed, while it is not anything, you know, outstanding, it is still a really solid speed stat, especially when you pair it with things like speed control, you know, for example, like a Tornadus with Tailwind, which has uh, really been one of its best friends so far, uh, you know, throughout regulations D and E. Um, and then again, you look at this, you know, it's, it's physical bulk is actually really solid at 100, 100. Its special defense is very bad at 60, but most teams right now are running at least four to five physical attackers. So that is not the worst thing, with, you know, it's not the worst thing in a metagame. And then if we have a look here at the stats as well, you have a look at mons that don't really like, you know, a um, good friend Urshifu. So Fluttermane is an interesting mon because while it doesn't necessarily love Urshifu, it also doesn't hate it because as long as, like, as long as it's faster, it threatens a lot of damage and potentially, you know, a one shot um, on most sets. It can run things like obviously Terra Fairy Moonblast with Choice Specs. Um, Choice Specs also likes to run things like Thunderbolt. So it does give it a very, very solid matchup. Now Iron Hands and, uh, and our good friend Amoongus here, they don't necessarily care that much about the, um, the Urshifu. Golden Girl is another one that doesn't necessarily care too much. Chien Pao, while it does love it as a partner, they pair very well together. Um, it also does actually have the ability to one-shot Chien Pao through its Focus Sash, which is basically what Chien Pao really used uh, and really has used for all of Scarlet and Violet, right? Its main go-to item is Focus Sash, and the right build on Urshifu will always one-shot that even through Focus Sash. Then we have Ting Lu, which was arguably the best mon in terms of countering Fluttermane. This mon was incredible into things like Fluttermane, you know, Chi Yu, and some, you know, some of the other, you know, special attackers, even Golden Go to a certain extent. This mon was really a glue mon that you could really slot in, you know, on, on every team, right? You know, I kind of said earlier, Garchomp and King, uh, great, great task, <laughs> great task with the two, you know, best ground types of the format. They were the two best offensive ground types of the format, where Ting Lu had the option to, you know, be very powerful while also being a very good defensive piece. This one was incredible. And, you know, thanks to Urshifu basically hitting it, you know, both its stab moves hitting it for super effective, essentially forces this one to Terra. And in the current metagame, there is just way too much like hyper offensive teams for Ting Lu to really thrive. Now, Talonflame, while it has not been, I guess, directly countered, um, it is definitely a mod that does not want to see, you know, the Urshifu, because it doesn't matter if it terrors, it has to run some weird terror just to survive an attack from it, and at that point, there's no real point. You set up Tailwind, Tornado sets up Tailwind, he one-shots you, you know, your partner doesn't really one-shot either of their mods, and it's kind of a bad time, yeah? You know, Arcanine, while technically, you know, Urshifu is really good into it, obviously, Hisuian Arcanine is technically worse into it, so that is fine. Uh, King Gambit here was one of the mods that was hit the worst by the Urshifus. Basically, not having a real way to get around them without something like Terra Fairy, which honestly, again, in this kind of metagame, it's it's not the greatest, right? This mod really wanted to run Terra Fire to avoid burns, basically just making it a raid boss, right? You can't get intimidated. Or we, I mean, technically, you can't be getting the attack boost from it. You go Terra Fire, you can't get burnt. It sweeps through, yeah? And then even mods like, you know, um, you know, Screamtail here and Mousehole. While these ones that didn't necessarily hate the addition of Urshifu, they didn't hate how offensive the metagame became, right? Because, you know, Screamtail is this really bulky mon that kind of wants to sit around and exist for a very long time. Whereas Mousehole is a mon where it wants to keep its friends alive with redirection, right? And if, if you're just redirecting Surging Strikes and getting one shot by it, then it's like, yeah, that was cool and all, but you may as well just use Amoongus who doesn't die to the Surging Strikes, right? Uh, Great Task is another mon. You know, this was a, a very common choice scarf that's slower than Urshifu and gets one shot by it, right? This mon loved running Terra Ground. I even ran Terra Ground at OCIC this year. It was fantastic. It, it doesn't love it, right? Uh, and Annihilate here, another mon that just doesn't like it. This is a mon that likes to set up its bulk ups and then basically just sit on the field, drain punch it all back. Urshifu says, I don't care if you bulk up, I'm just going to kill you through it, right? So Urshifu definitely, in my opinion, is the most restricting mon that came back in the, the home update just because of how much offensive pressure it applied and it really kind of just put a lot of strategies um into a position where they couldn't really be played right you're talking about the raid boss setups you know you're talking about screen setups right um you know certain mods that really wanted certain terrors to basically be able to thrive in the metagame it really couldn't do it anymore then we have Tornadoes. You know, we said earlier, it, it's the premier Tailwind setter, right? The only Tailwind setter currently, you know, in the game that is faster than this mon 
is Talonflame, but the difference between Talonflame and Tornadus is Talonflame relies on, you know, its ability being Gale Wings, which essentially means if anything is faster than it and has a priority move, it can then break the Tailwind, oh sorry, break the Gale Wings, which would then, you know, potentially allow an ally to clean up. A very common one was things like, you know, E-Speed coming out, right? And then, you know, even actually, yeah, not Quidjet, right? From Urshipu, right? Just basically any double priority or even like an E-Speed into, you know, something like a Flutter Main just having, you know, Timid Max Speed, being able to then outspeed and one-shot, all right? So that was a big thing. But then two, Tornadus paired incredibly well with Urshifu, right? We talked about how strong this mom was offensively and main its main real like issue was its speed stat being pretty average, right? Tornadus fixed that speed stat issue with the Tailwind, but it also made it like situations where if your opponent didn't have their own Tailwind or they were playing more of a slow balance, Tornadus could just set up Rain Dance for a Terra Water Urshifu whose damage was already insane and just make it completely bonkers, right? There are some resists that just get one shot by it. Uh, and yeah, that was just an incredibly good combination. Then you have Landorus, right? Landorus coming back into the game, arguably the premier tail, uh, the, sorry, the premier intimidate mod in the format right now, right? This mod is incredibly good and it has an absurd attack stat, right? The most common set we've been seeing recently is Choice Scarf, as it is one of the best Choice Scarfers in the game. It's very, very good on balance with things like U turn, um, obviously Stomping Tantrum, as well as another really, really solid attack on it. And then it has things, you know, like Rock Slide. But really, the main thing I think in this current metagame that has made Landorus so good is Terra Blast with Terra Flying. Landorus' biggest issue has always been it's never had a, you know, a proper flying stab, right? You know, it ran Max Airstream back in Gen 8, uh, but before that, it really didn't have anything, right? I think its best move was always fly, where now, you know, you've talked about this mom with this absurd attack stat, now getting this, you know, very strong stab move, and this was just, like, the perfect answer to things like, for example, Amoongus, which is a really, really common one we were seeing, you know, it's a really solid one into Golden Go, you know, it's pretty good into the Arcanines, as like, you know, technically, it, it, it likes to run that scuff, which they don't like to run, so then you can get the Intimidator, you know, pivot around with U-turns, it's just not, you know, it, it's not fun for some of these, you know, older, um, you know, these older Intimidate mods, like, you know, the Gyaradoses and the Arcanines. Right, and then we have Heatran. Now, Heatran, I don't necessarily think was a a bad like. I don't think it was a bad mon introduced. Right, we kind of needed like a secondary like offensive fire type that wasn't Chiyu, because really we're in a position where if you look at these stats, right, we have you know, you have Chiyu here, but it was like the third most used fire type. The two like above it were the Arcanine and the Talonflame, yeah. But both these mons are like more supportive, right? Talonflame's like going Tailwind, it's got Will-O-Wisp. Arcanine, yeah, sure it can deal damage with like Flare Blitz, but again, it kind of wants to get the Will-O-Wisps off. It has Snarl for Psy Spam and that kind of stuff, right? And Shiyu, while it's incredibly good, right? It was not a very bulky mon. This mon is all offense. It will die to, you know, a lot of things. Hence why a lot of the time it runs things like, you know, Focus Sash or like Choice Scarf Terra Ghost, just to, you know, try help and get one or two attacks off. Whereas I do think Heatran was this really, you know, a really bulky mon that also has a like decent-ish speed stat that has a really, really good special attack stat and is basically able to sit there and, you know, spam out things like Heat Wave. Um, it was also a really good answer into Chi Yu and some of the other fire types as well because, you know, as you see here, having three fire types in, what, the top 10 um, is pretty crazy, right? Fire types have been really, really good for most of the metagame. Um, so, you know, just to have a, another fire type that kind of checks fire types with its flash fire ability, I do think was really important. Now, Rillaboom is another one that I actually do think was a relatively healthy addition to the game. Um, you know, having like something like, you know, Grassy Surge plus Fake Out was really good. Um, Grassy Surge 2 also gave us like finally a mon that could pair up well with things like, you know, for example, Leftover Goldens Go. Um, you know, when you go for like a Nasty Pop plus, you know, having Grassy Surge and, and the Leftovers there, you've got a lot of recovery, right? So you can kind of play around with your... You know, you protect, get a lot of health back, and it was really, really good. You know, it also gave us, you know, um, our good friend Grassy Glide when the DLC dropped, so we got, you know, another priority move back. Uh, even though it was, you know, uh, nerfed a bit, it was still a good answer into things like the Flood of Main, right? And then obviously, you know, you get strong wood hammers and whatnot. I do think this mod was just a really, really good addition for balance teams. It did kind of help to slow down the metagame, gave you a reasonably bulky mod that also had a really good attack stat with, you know, really good stab moves as well. So I do think Rillaboom was actually a pretty solid addition. Then we have Dark Urshi. Now, Dark Urshi, I do think is actually, for the most part, it's been pretty slept on the whole time it's been available, but I do think this mod is really, really good. Obviously, you know, Wicked Blow did get nerfed coming into this um, into this generation, but pretty similar to what we said about, you know, Urshi Rapid earlier, this mod is just really, really good. Its ability is broken. It has two really, really strong stabs. You know, Fighting and Dark are really good. This mod's biggest issue is it doesn't really have an answer to the Fairy types, and when Fluttermane, you know, is the, the top used mon, and Iron Hands is the second most used mon, it is a pretty rough position for the mon, but regardless, I do think this mon, if it was around and Urshi Rapid wasn't, I do think we'd definitely see more play, as its ability and its signature move are both pretty broken. 
Grisalia is another mon that on its release was incredibly good, right? This mon paired really, really well with um, regular Ursa Luna. It was also just a fantastic trick room setter, right? It was a really bulky trick room setter. Um, it also got a new signature move in Luna Blessing as well, which has been really, really good for it. Um, and honestly, it's just an incredibly bulky mod that just sits around for ages. It has, you know, access to other things like Icy Wind. You know, it can throw out, you know, some stab Psychics and whatnot. Um, Terra Fairy Moonblast was something also that was very, very co uh, popular on this mod. Um, I do think this mod was very, very bulky. Um, and honestly, we probably, like... I don't want to say we didn't have the power level to deal with it because like obviously i think the home update in general did just bring a lot of power but it really just brought on this like super super bulky trick room mon and it really feels like we needed more answers to this guy in particular because with terra i did think chriselia became a little too good now look guys i could continue to go on and on right about basically all the pokemon in this list you know we still have a you know quite a few good ones that we didn't really touch on with the reggies you know the canto birds thundy and whatnot but really, at the end of the day, I think the purpose of this video was to mainly talk about the mons that were the most broken from the home update. And really, I feel like I've done that, you know. I, I feel like anything really that isn't between Urshifu here and maybe Cresselia actually could have been healthy additions to the metagame. But really, with this core group of, you know, what is this, six, seven mons here, I do really think they kind of broke open the game, right? Urshifu Rapid Strike is just too strong. Tornadus is by far the best Tailwind setter, and it's not even close. You know, while Landorus technically hasn't always been the best, you know, Intimidate Mon so far, you know, with things like Hisui and Arcanine outclassing it in some events, it is still incredibly good and is the best ground type we have in the format. Heatran right now is, again, probably the best fire type we have in the format. And while, you know, some of the new Mons we got in DLC 1, like, you know, Fire Ogre Pawn, for example, do give you a little bit of counterplay to it, it is still a really, really good bulky Mon. And we've seen that in its results, right? So all in all, what do I think about the home update? And do I think it ruined the metagame? Uh, the simple answer for me is yes, right? When I, you know, I go back to these stats here and you look at some of them, right? You know, even even just look at these tournament results here. You see a Ting Lu on, you know, the first place team. And while Ting Lu, you know, a lot of people kind of maybe did complain about it, right? Sitting there saying this mod's too bulky, it's too annoying, it's hard to deal with, blah, blah, blah. And while Urshifu does give you a great answer to it, it kind of also means that, you know, you kind of need to run things like a Moongus on, you know, a lot of teams if you don't have, a, you know, a way to deal with it, right? You're also seeing like a mod like Palafin, which is one of my personal favorite mods, you know, in, you know, Generation 9, essentially just completely fall off a cliff because Urshifu technically outclasses it in the sense that the metagame was so hyper-offensive and Palafin needed that turn to set up where Urshifu didn't. All Urshifu really wanted was, you know, a Tornadus to click, you know, really rain dance for it, whereas Palafin kind of needed to pivot around and it kind of formed a really nice, you know, core with, you know, mons like, you know, for example, Amoongus, you know, and um, Iron Hands here on Regav's team. And because of that, Urshifu really just kind of outclassed it, removed it from the metagame, right? And then again, it goes on and on. Why run Gyarados as your water type when you could run Urshifu as your water type? You know, King Gambit, it fell off. Why? Because it just wasn't a good mon into either of the Urshifu forms. And it goes on, right? And for me, really, it is just one of those things where you look at some of these usage stats and you see, you know, I think it's about 10 or 11 of these mons essentially just fell off and saw no play after Regulation D dropped. And to me, that's a really bad sign for a metagame. When half of your good mons drop off, because, you know, a subset of, what, 20 or 30 mons get added. It, it To me, it really just shows that the power creep was a little too high for what we had. I think, in an ideal world, what should have happened is these mons, at the bare minimum, should have released alongside DLC 2. Uh, and if, honestly, if, if I had to, you know, have, have it my way, really, I would have liked to have seen, you know, a home update, you know, say, around Pokemon Home, uh, sorry, Pokemon Day next year, that would have given us these mons, because that way we could have played, you know, DLC 2, using mons like, you know, Whimsicott, Metagross and so forth without having to worry about some of these mons like the Landorus and the Urshifu and then eventually give us an update down the line where you add all these mons maybe alongside things like the Tapus to really just kind of help you know even out that power grip a little bit because the second you add these mons they are just really gonna run the metagame and honestly we saw that in Regulation D and um, while some of those issues were slightly fixed in Regulation E really these mons just have such a grasp on the metagame that it is really just a little too constricting for my liking uh, and because of that i do think that home did in a sense ruin vgc 2023